Good afternoon and welcome to Talk A Good Game and a game that has finished. West Ham United won, Chelsea won. That game packed full of incidents. So much incident, we're possibly not even going to get much time for opinion on it. And So much happened in that game. I'm joined uh, by Irish Tommy. Tommy, thank you very much for joining me, mate. First things first, deserved point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it wasn't a great spectacle. Um, I think we, you could see that you're looking at two teams who defensively are, are pretty solid, but who also struggle to score goals at the other end. And that's really kind of how it played out in the end. Um, so I don't think really over the course of the 90 plus minutes that either side really did enough to justify three points. Um both teams clearly with some things to work on. Um, but yeah, look, it's it's another game that we haven't lost. Uh, another game that we have earned the point. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think either manager would be particularly pleased uh, with the performances. Um, uh, um, but I suppose they'll both just have to settle for the point today, I'm afraid, because neither team really shone. In attack, um, there was no real fluidity to either team going forward, and, and so I think uh, at the end of the day, I think I think the a point each, I think, was a fair reflection. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would totally and utterly uh, agree with that. Full of instant, and yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, but we'll get to the instant at the start. Uh, let's cut straight to the chase. Uh, Paqueta injured. Uh, he went down a uh, shoulder injury. Uh, obviously, he's got history uh, with the collarbone. There, we don't know until. Until that comes through, and we got some confirmation on that. Uh, he he went off. He tried to carry on. At uh, the moment, he had to get involved in any sort of physical duel. Uh, it then flared up again, and he said, "No, no, 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 get me off." Um, David Moyes, I, I found this a frustrating substitution at the time. David Moyes uh, decided that he was going to replace him. Uh, with Thomas Suchek, which at the time, I, you know, as I say, didn't feel particularly like the right thing to do. And of course, we had to change the way we were going to play because they're not like for like substitutions. What did you think at that point, mate? Yeah, obviously, look, it, it was a real worry when when uh, Paqueta went down. We were only about five minutes in. Um, went down heavily on his shoulder. He was holding it and got some medical attention and went off, but came back on, obviously, to see if he could run it off. And, uh, you know, the hope was that, you know, he he just kind of, it was a bit sore and maybe it was bruised or something that he'd be okay. Uh, but as you say, the, the next time he came into physical contact with a Chelsea player, uh, obviously it was, it was very painful for him and he signalled immediately that he had to come off. So that was a massive blow because we were just about getting to the point where we felt like we might be able to get our first choice 11 onto the pitch against Tottenham yeah. possibly next week. Uh, the hope being that Skamaka would be available next week, possibly. Um, and then Paqueta goes down in the early minutes of the game. So that was a blow. And then personally, for me at the time, I felt like Moyes added insult to injury with the substitution. Um, as you say, not like for like players whatsoever. Thomas Socek uh, just does not offer anything like Paqueta does. Uh, he, he's really just a kind of defensive midfielder at this point. You know, he'll get up for set pieces, um, but he offers, you know, an open play. He offers virtually nothing going forward. Um, I thought that was a good opportunity to get someone like Flynn Downs on, uh, someone who can do the defensive stuff, but can also carry the ball at feet, who can pass the ball, who can get involved going forward. Um, even Fornells, you know, who can do all of that as well. I would have understood as a substitution. Um, so bringing on Socek for me wasn't a surprise. I mean, I knew. No, 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 of course. Well, you know, I think we all knew what was going to happen. It was going to be Socek. Um, it was entirely predictable, but it was a very disappointing substitution and typical Moyes substitution. But yeah, that just kind of exacerbated the issue of losing Paqueta, in my opinion. Absolutely. And we were going to go on to concede very, very shortly 
afterwards, uh, for those of you that hadn't seen the game, you had uh, João Felix, who I thought in the first half was magnificent for Chelsea, uh, completely bossing, completely dictating the game. And we were having to foul him on numerous occasions. Kera fouled him early on. Suchek came on. One of the first things he did uh, was was he fa- was fouled. I, I will give you a spoiler here. Suchek goes on to perform a lot better uh, in this game, by the way. But this, this is just, we were, we're describing how we felt at certain points uh, during the game. Um, as I say, we didn't have to wait long uh, for Chelsea to score. Unfortunately, there were, if you were nervous at the time about Paqueta getting injured, there was a 50-50 uh, challenge, uh, which which, oh, which Jared Bowen was involved in. Was it was it, was it Mudrek he was um, involved in the challenge with? It may well have been. Yeah. Uh, 50-50. And, and uh, he's... Bowen didn't pull out of it, but he didn't sort of fully contest it. And you know what I often say that one, if you don't, if you sort of don't go into a challenge fully, you're going a bit half-hearted, you might well get injured. It had that look about him. Uh, so Bowen came out of the challenge sort of hopping, as it were. The ball got uh, recycled. Uh, Chelsea won the ball. It went to Fernandez, who, who was another very, very good player in this game. And uh, he delivered the ball over, and it was a it was a, it was a curling ball uh, with his right foot uh, shaped to curl towards the goal. And then, uh, well, well I'll, I'll tell you immediately what my opinion of it is. I, uh, The commentator didn't seem to know whether to blame uh, Emerson or blame a Gerd. But I think if you go and watch that back again, you'll see a Gerd very much look to see where Joe Felix is. And he points as well. And he's definitely pointing. There's only one player behind him. That's Emerson. And I think he's pointing to pretty much say to Emerson, you're on, Re- I think it's Reese James, you're on him there. He looks and he's very much knows. So at this point where he looks, Joe Felix is right next to a Gerd. As Jao Felix loses him, or you know, goes goes to sleep, whatever turns around at that point, uh, Felix loses him. A uh, very, very, a uh, very good delivery, nice sharp bit of play from Felix, who had been excellent, poor defending uh, from us, and uh, he side footed it home, Tommy, to make it one nil Chelsea. Yeah, and and to be honest, I mean, it was on the cards. I mean, uh, once again, um, just a really, really poor start to the game from us. The players looked like they'd slept in. And been yeah. woken up just before the game. Like, come on, we've got a game. Hurry up. You're going to be late. You know, they didn't look at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, th- there was no energy, no tempo, no intensity. We were sitting off. Chelsea were just knocking the ball about at will. We'd gotten away with a couple already from the offsides that were given. Um, a couple had been chalked off already. And yeah. that, that goal had been coming for a while, unfortunately. Um and, you know, this is a nasty, nasty habit that we've picked up. We saw it at Newcastle again last week. Um, that For some reason, we, we just can't get our heads in the game until something goes wrong. Um, and, yeah, that, that goal was on the cards. Um, and, unfortunately, the inevitable happened, as you say, with Joe Felix getting in, in behind the defence. Um, and, well, it was a, a simple finish, really, from seven yards. Couldn't miss. Uh, and at that point... You know, it was really worrying because we've been so poor and Chelsea had been all over us. Yeah. That you really, really worried that there was going to be one of those days where we just did not turn up and, and that we were going to hand Chelsea a facile, comfortable win. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's fair to say, again, I will, I, will, I will assume that there are some people here who haven't watched it. Uh, for those of you that, that have, you make up your own mind on it. I, I thought there were points where Chelsea were just all over us. They were they were scintillating, actually. And you wondered why they were where they were. Uh, pace, um, they had real quality and wide positions. The best player on, on the pitch at that point uh, in Felix, really good uh, player in Fernandes. And, um, and they seem to have... Well, look, I thought Antonio battled extremely well, by the way, but there was a lot of times where he was marked by three defenders, it seemed. So there, were, there seemed little or no chance for us to um, to really punch any holes into them. However, however, we did manage to get back into it. We invited him on us for far too long. Um, I think initially we had a counter. We Initially, we had a counter attack. Uh, which was our first one, a rare counter-attack where uh, Antonio tried to sort of, the ball came in from Bowen, he tried almost a little Ronaldinho flick, if you want, uh, tried to score. Uh, That didn't happen. But we we attacked very, very um, quickly after. There was a little exchange of passes between Suchek and Sufal. And Sufal crossed the ball in. And you felt like it was a cross into an area. Uh, Jared Bowen read uh, the cross into the area and did a little glancing header. So uh, yeah, yes. So so you you looking at the camera? You are you are Sufal crossing it to me. I'm Bowen, 
and behind me is the goal. And I flick it on. Nice delivery, by the way, that you did there. Uh, I flick it on and running in behind me, running in towards the goal. Who would you think? Emerson, really? Yes, Emerson at the back post, drifted into space, not only scoring his first West Ham goal, his first Premier League goal, uh, apparently. Look, whilst we might uh, bemoan uh, some poor defending for us conceding the goal, uh, I, when I said it, it, in my opinion, uh, it was a good uh, for that one and then possibly, you know, a little bit of Bowen pulling out the challenge slightly. Chelsea will certainly feel that they could have done better for this goal. But from our point of view, from a West Ham point of view, I thought it was a good goal. I thought it was an intelligent sort of flick on uh, from Bowen. And I, and I thought that was, uh, you know, you can see why Emerson will score goals there. I thought he drifted in uh, really well <laughs> at that point. 1-1, one, one. disbelief for you, Tommy, at that point? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I mean, it kind of came out of the blue. Um, it, you know, unlike the Chelsea goal, you didn't feel like an equaliser was coming. Sure. Um, you know, we we were really struggling. I mean, I think, I think in a, in the early part of the game, uh, I think we had something like fourteen percent possession or sure, some ridiculous, sorry, yeah, that like that. And uh, so it didn't look like we were going to create anything whatsoever. But a simple ball really played out to the right hand side to Sufal, but Chelsea defensively had completely switched off. Yeah, Cucurella was absolutely nowhere. Sufal was able to control the ball, shift it out of his feet, have a look in, into the penalty area, and, and then pick out the cross, and no one came near him. Um, you know, I think Potter would have been fuming at that, you know, that, that nobody closed him down. Um, and as you say, it, it wasn't a brilliant ball in, even at that, but thankfully, Bowen was in the area and was able to get his head on it. And as you say, a very smart flick. A you know, really dangerous flick on across the face of goal, and uh, as I say, there was Emerson Palmieri, um, yeah, coming in with a late run at the far post, and again, no Chelsea defender had picked up his run. Uh, he was all on his own, um, and he had a, a neat little finish. He kind of hit it into the ground, which is exactly what it needed, because I, I think a low drill shot along the ground and Kepa saves it, yeah, uh, sure. but he. He hit, yeah, he hit it into the ground and, and bounced it over the keeper uh, into the net and um, just completely a bolt from the blue, really, and we were back level. And, um, you know, that led to what was probably our best spell of the game. Uh, I think it stunned right. Chelsea and kind of rocked them back on their heels a little bit. Um, and our tails were up. And I thought, you know, for the next few minutes, um, you know, the crowd were up. Yes. Our players' tails were up, and we were able to actually put some sustained attacking pressure on Chelsea, uh, probably the only time in the game that we did. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to sustain it or, or score a second in that period of time. But you, at that point, you thought, OK, you know, we're, we're back in the game. All right, it's against the run of play, but we're playing better now and our tails are up. Um, maybe now we'll actually see you know, a bit of a performance and we're, we're in the game now and the confidence is, is kind of there and we might play a lot better and hopefully, uh, you know, really challenge Chelsea. But uh, unfortunately, it kind of tapered off again. And Well, we had we had half time, didn't we? I, I felt we finished a half uh, strongly. How are you feeling at half time? Um, well, mixed bag. Look, I was very relieved uh, given, you know, the very slow start we'd had again, you know, that, that we'd managed to get ourselves back level, uh, albeit against the run of play, but um, like I say, we picked it up after that a bit. And uh, the rest of the half, I thought we, we kind of held our own. Um, no scares, really. Um, but obviously, it was still underwhelming, the way that we had performed. Um, and, and that we needed to, to change something up at half time, uh, Even if it was just, you know, just the energy and, and stuff and, and the tempo and just pick it up and, and find a way to get at Chelsea's back line. Um, because we just hadn't been able to do it enough. And, of course, that's been one of our problems all season. We're one of the lowest goal scorers in the league. Yeah. Um, so I, I hoped that in the dressing room that, that Moyes could kind of uh, turn things around a little bit and that we'd, we'd come out with renewed vigour and, and hopefully see a better attacking performance in the second half. I felt like we were solid enough defensively. Um, I felt we were solid enough in the middle of yeah. the park. We were doing OK there. Um, after obviously after a dodgy start, but we had settled down defensively and settled down in midfield. I just felt like Moyes has got to find a way to to get us counterattacking properly, and, and so that we can really threaten them going the other way. And and so that was my hope at half time. 
Yeah, I, I, I felt, well, I thought it was an improvement in the second half, but probably not the one uh, you or I wanted to see, which it wasn't an improvement in our attacking play. What I did feel that we were able to do was come off our line a little bit quickly and dispossess Shao Felix earlier. And, and it works. There's no doubt about that in my mind. I saw them all do it. A Gerd did it. A Bonner did it. A Kera did it at least three times, actually, uh, came off and just nicked the ball early off Shao Felix. And that sort of stopped that in its tracks. And it, and it was it was amazing, the, the impact it had. I still felt Chelsea were, um, you know, had good possession. But as you as you alluded to in the first half, they had the ball in the back of our net three times. All right, only one of them was a goal. But of course, we saw this uh, against Newcastle as well. Uh, that wasn't going to happen in the second half. They weren't getting that kind of space and threat in and behind. I also felt that, all, well, with the exception of one, maybe, um, all of Fabianski's best work was in the first half, which suggests, you know, they uh, we we sorted it out uh, defensively. And and I think, you know, grew more accustomed to how we were playing. I thought uh, Declan Rice uh, settled more into the game. But and we, we were sort of tried to counterattack as, as much as we could, but we weren't really effective at it. It was hard, hard work for Antonio. But Bowen... Ironically enough, once Chelsea changed and we had had Chilwell on there, and I understood why they might want to um, to do that change, Chelsea, because, you, I mean, you mentioned Cucurella earlier. I actually thought Bowen got a little bit more change out of Chilwell, actually, and I thought there was a little bit more encouragement there. Unfortunately, we weren't really firing uh, on the other side in terms of uh, Ben Rama didn't, uh, didn't have a, a great game. Um, however, however, we're just going to sort of fast forward a little bit here. I did notice somebody else has asked in there who got injured today. Well, let me tell you where we are at this point in the video. Uh, so uh, up to this point in the video, um, Paqueta is injured. Um, we're worried at this point that Bowen might be, um, uh, but uh, but Bowen seems to have carried on okay. But we've not finished. The, the, the story uh, has got to run to the end. Um, we're going to we're, we're gonna be another, in, another injury coming along in the 79th minute. Uh, so hold tight there. Just before we get to that point, we had a goal. We had a goal ruled out for VAR, uh, Tommy. Uh, talk us through that, mate. Yeah, it was uh, some really good work um, out on the right hand side. Um, we, we got a free kick out there uh, in, a, in a good position to get a ball into the box. Um, everyone's up. Emerson uh, standing over it. And Emerson puts in an absolute beaut, it yes. has to be said. A, a absolute beaut of a delivery. It, it's, you know, one of those kind of uh, left-footed ones curling away um, from from the keeper that just screams, get your head on that, son. Um, Declan Rice got to it first, uh, got a really good header on it, drew an excellent save, it has to be said. You know, close-range save from sure. Kepa at full stretch with his left hand, and the rebound fell beautifully for Thomas Socek, who uh, who just tapped it over the line for what we thought was potentially a late winner uh, until we saw the freeze-frame replay and realised that Declan had gone just a fraction early and was just offside. Um, so that was a real kicker because, you know, a goal at that point, I think, would almost certainly have been a winner. Yes, um, I agree. Yeah. So... Um, that would have been huge for us, regardless of performance. I mean, obviously, where we are in the table, you know, wins are massive for us. Um, and if we could have, um, I won't use the word, housed a 2-1 win. Uh, uh, if yes, we'd have, yes. You know, yes, if we'd have S-housed uh, yes. a 2-1 win, um, that, that would have been a massive boost, regardless of performance, and, and you know, would have kept us kind of moving in the right direction. So it was it was really unfortunate that Deck was just offside. It was literally just offside here, like the shoulder area here was just offside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so it got chalked off. Um, but it was the correct call. He was just offside. But um, you know, it has to be said, you know, brilliant delivery, uh, and um, yeah, just a shame that that you know we were that close to nicking it. We were, we were, we were close to win it, uh, to nicking it as well, and I was, I was really pleased with that. And then, you know what? I, there were there were points when we did make Chelsea nervous. So I'll, I'll upload a, a video, yeah. you know, in in an, in an hour or so up on a forum channel. I'll go into it and in my thoughts on it in a little more detail because uh, we're sort of you know twenty minutes into this, and we still haven't finished. Uh, 
on there. But I, I thought we could have put more more pressure on them. That's for sure. Uh, because I think when pressure was on Chelsea, they sort of folded a little bit. Um, but I do think it was a deserved draw. We still got more of the game to to talk over. I, I think think we we played well at the bits that we did. I thought we weathered the storm um, really well. But we defended manfully. Actually, very very well. Um, unfortunately, um, a Gerd picked up an injury, which is uh, the bit one. So he went off on a 79th minute. Looked like thigh or hamstring. He was uh, certainly his leg. Let's put it that way. The upper leg. Um, There was something going on there. He asked to be substituted, which wasn't great. He did walk off the pitch under his own steam. So you would hope it's not going to be out for uh, a long time. I, I, if I had to guess, I don't know. I <laughs> clearly not a doctor. I would suspect that Paquetta will be out for longer than the Gerds. Don't know though. That's just my hunch from uh, from seeing it. Uh, Johnson came in basically. John, there, there were other substitutions, by the way, and we should, we will probably discuss. It. I, I just want to skip over the other substitutions uh, before we get to the handball really, really quickly. But basically, Johnson came on for a Gerd uh, and, and played well. Thought he did really well. Slotted in there, made some clearances, did really well there. Uh, there was a couple of substitutions uh, which came on the 60th minute. Uh, disappointing for me. I thought, you know, we could have gone for it. We could have taken the game uh, to Chelsea. Ultimately, Moyes will feel he's proved vindicated. Uh, but <laughs> Mikel Antonio was withdrawn at a point where he'd actually just started to, I think, get the measure of the Chelsea centre halves, he just done a wonderful um, bit of target man play, bit of a uh, number nine play. Held the ball up, really good turn and spin. Got in beh- behind them, uh, drawn a foul, won us a free kick. Was was looking good there. Um, and I actually, what I thought, what I wanted to see happen was then I want to see Ben Rama go off. He, he wasn't having a good game. I thought maybe Antonio to go uh, onto the left and and then Ings to go up through the middle and maybe they could partner in, in some way or just just switch it up. Uh, unfortunately, what happened was Ben Rama went off and he brought on Flynn Downs. Um, and look, might as well say because he nearly won the game. So you know it was an offside away from winning the game. Um, and um, and and Ings basically Antonio came off. He didn't look knackered or anything. So and Ings came on and you know didn't play quite as well as Antonio uh, was playing. Just very quickly before we get to the other bits, Tom, are your thoughts on on that substitution? Uh, no, that double substitution in particular. Uh, again, expected. Um, when I saw Ings was coming on, I said this is almost certainly going to be the usual Moyes straight swap yeah. for Antonio. So I was really disappointed with that. I think at that point in the game, as you say, I mean, Antonio was, was kind of playing quite well yep. uh, and he was causing some problems. And I thought this would be a perfect opportunity uh, to go two up top. Even, you know, I would have I would have gone maybe three in midfield with two up. So a five, three, two. Yeah. Uh, and just see, um, you know, if, if Danny Ings can get something out of Antonio's good work. You know, for example, you know, if Antonio makes a spin like that in behind, which is a beautiful spin in behind, if he's got... Danny Ings making a run in behind somewhere. There's a potential there for him to slip a ball in. Sure. And maybe we nick a goal. Um, and I wanted to see what that partnership would look like, you know, towards the end of the game. But unfortunately, Moyes just doesn't think that way. He doesn't really think about going for games. He look, yeah. He'll make me do that if, if we're losing and we desperately have to score. Um, Moyes ultimately is, is probably, he's, he's the consummate kind of respect the point manager, isn't he? So, um he, he doesn't tend to do that, so no surprise it was a like for right like swap. Um, but I was disappointed with it, I have to say. I, I thought he could have been a bit more positive. And it's not as if, you know, 5 3 2 is gung ho by any means, is it? He could, he could have kind of had his cake and eat it. You know, he could have yeah. had two up top, plus his kind of three centre backs, his wing backs, and his three yeah. midfielders. Yeah. Um, you know, plenty of cover there. You know, his, his buddy Socek is still on there doing his defensive work. So um, he, he could have had it his own way, really, but it's just not in his nature, unfortunately. And we saw him do the usual like-for-like like swap. I was really disappointed. Because as, as you say, you know, Antonio hasn't played that much football this year. I mean, he's fresh. You know, he could have easily played the full 95 yeah. minutes as it turned out and uh, no problem. So uh, it, it's a shame, really, that he didn't really try to grasp the nettle. No, he did he played for just over an hour, which was I, I did find was was quite odd actually. Um, he was, oh, him, him and Bowen were our uh, you know big big attack biggest attacking threats at, at that point. Um, I mentioned Suchek had a goal disallowed for VAR. Um, Suchek, Suchek was also involved in, in another instance. I, I feel we're very lucky on this one. It has to be said. What was your take on uh, Suchek's 
handball sort of um, well, it was a good save, wasn't it? I thought he did, did well. It was a, the second best save, uh, well, third best save of the game actually. I felt that one from Suchek. Yeah, he, he um, you know any goalkeeper would be, you know, proud as punch getting down that quick to a shot, a low shot, you know, that's close to the body. Yeah. You know, if, if a keeper makes that save close range, I think Cos could save. You know, he got down so quick, got a hand to it, kept it out. You know, uh, yeah, look, we've got away with one there. Yes. And like, to be honest with you, like, I'm assuming we got away with one. I don't know. They change the rules every other week on what's a handball in the penalty area and what's not. So uh, maybe that's the correct ruling. I, I've got no idea because obviously Vera would have seen it and looked at it. Yeah. Um, but they, they basically just waved it off. You know, like, nah, nothing there. Uh, which surprised me because I remember seeing the first replay that they showed on BT and I was thinking, oh, we're banging in trouble here. You know, I thought that was going to be a pen. Um, but maybe they've gone and changed the rules again, whereas if, you know, a player that kind of goes to ground to block a shot and hits his hand if it's in a natural position, which his hand was, whenever whenever you're going to go to ground, you know, you're going to put your, your forearm down to kind of break your fall. And essentially that's what happened and it hit his hand. Uh, which took the sting out of the shot, and Fabianski was able to kind of just come and, and fall on it on on the ball. Um, but it did at the time feel like we'd we'd gotten away with one. But uh, to be honest, Gonzo, I mean, I, I'd have to check the rules on on handballs and what is considered, a, you know, a, a foul essentially in the penalty area when it comes to handball. Well, a couple not. of people are saying in the chat they think it hit his knee. And then it hit his arm, which if that's the case, then that would that would probably explain it. Yes. So um, you know, yeah, I, geez, and I yeah, I saw the replays. I, I never saw it. I, 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 I didn't see it. I, yeah. and, and the commentators, you know, I was watching it on BT. They they hadn't noticed it, but yeah, yeah, well, you know, if that's if that's what happened, that would explain it. And uh, that would yeah, yeah, that would certainly explain it because what we do know is the rule that we do know is that. Uh, you're not going to get a handball if it's deflected onto your no, onto no, your no. hand. So. Well, this, this uh, so so this is good. That that's good. Okay, so in which case we didn't we didn't get away with one, and that's that's absolutely fine. I, I, our goal clearly wasn't a goal, and um, if that's the case, then then there was no case to be had uh, for handball. So overall, we we both think it was a deserved point. Um, it moves us up to 15 for the for the time being. What's the time? Yeah, I mean it's three o'clock now. Uh, it's just about to uh, uh, kick off. I don't mean you and me. We're not going to have a round. I mean uh, the the um, the Premier League uh, fixtures are about to start. Uh, so give us a, give us a couple of a couple of players. You'd uh, notable mentions, please, Tommy. Yeah, well, look, I mean there wasn't a whole lot to write home about today. Um, I, I don't think there was any kind of great performances. Um, I thought even even Declan, you know, who was magnificent last week. I. I he was solid. Um, it wasn't one of his better performances today. Uh, but I think the same can be said of the whole team. I think solid is kind of the word today, really. Nobody kind of had a stinker. Maybe you can make a case for Ben Rama didn't do enough. Um, but I thought it was generally solid. Um, I think maybe notable exception, I did think, was Emerson. I actually thought Emerson stood out today. I thought he had a really good game. He's on the back of a really yeah, yeah on, the back, on the back of a really good performance against Newcastle, uh, I think all of our defenders, including Carer, who's gotten a lot of stick, I have to say, uh, and I, and I don't think all of it fair, I have to say, um, some of it fair, but not all of it. So I thought Carer was solid today, did a decent job. Um, same with Augie and Aguirre and Johnson when he came on. Um, so fell again, it was okay, nothing special. Defensively, did well. Um, Obviously played his part in the, in in scoring the goal, um, put the cross in for for Bowen to to glance on, um, so he did okay today. I thought so fell. <clears throat> uh, again in midfield, uh, Solchek obviously look will work manfully. He always does. Yes. Doesn't offer anything going forward. Doesn't really help us on the counter attack whatsoever. But is obviously a danger on set pieces. Um, but defensively, as always, did his work. You know. Um, Again, Bowen, uh, again, he did okay, but again, didn't really carry a threat. Nice glance on flick header for the goal again. Yes, it was good. Uh, but, but unfortunately, just not really carrying a goal threat. Um, but I don't want to flog a dead horse, and I'll keep going on about our inability to really counter-attack, which we're going to have to figure out, because they said we always just play on the counter. So, um, we had lots of solid performances, but I thought, you know, the standout from our perspective today... Um, I thought it was Emerson. But I should say, actually, um, Fabianski um, did have some saves to make. 
particularly early on. Now, look, none of them were worldies. Um, they were all saves you would hope your keeper would make, uh, but you got them all right. You know, he, he saved what he was supposed to save, did what he was supposed to do, uh, wasn't at fault for the goal. He had absolutely no chance against that. Um, so, yeah, lots of solid, okay performances, but for me, Emerson kind of was the standout. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll, just, I'll speak about this a, a little bit. So, Emerson, man of the match for yourself. I'll speak about uh, the rest uh, a little bit. Long. Yeah, we're doing nearly half an hour now. Uh, so, we'll wrap it up now. But just to say that on Fabianski, beautiful throw at one point, which yeah. um, really, which launched a counter-attack. And if, um, yeah, I thought there were two or three counter-attacks where we just, we were indecisive. And we didn't quite execute the final ball. It was uh, Bowen twice, once with Sue Fowl, and actually we would have been in. We, we would have been in. There was one particular ball which should have gone from Sue Fowl to Ben Rama. It was free and on his own in front of goal. I'm not sure whether he was not capable of making a pass or he just didn't notice Ben Rama. But it was that that I mean it would have been a real legitimate bona fide chance with Ben Rama one on one in front of the keeper from about eight yards out, which I think, you know, we missed. Um, we missed one there. Anyway, there you go. Um, thank you very much for joining me, Tommy. I, I do appreciate it, mate. Thank you. I asked Tommy at very, very late notice. So do appreciate that, mate. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, if you are watching the channel for the first time, please do uh, press the subscribe button, which is down below. If you're going to do that, press the bell next to it. It will notify you when we upload. If you stick a thumbs up on the video as well, if you've enjoyed it, then that would be very, very helpful. Helps it get shared amongst the internet. Uh, Please do check out our Patreon channel. Link is in the description below. And just also let you know, we have a second channel, Forum channel, where we also upload daily. Link's in the description below. It's called Hammers Chat Forum. Put it into the search bar in uh, in Google, uh, YouTube, should I say, and you'll find that as well. I'll be uploading in a bit. Uh, Gio will be back uploading here uh, on Monday for sure. Uh, Charlie, I think, will be uploading as well. Myself and Gio will be back uh, doing player ratings on Patreon. I'll be on the Forum channel uh, in, in an hour or so. Uh, Tommy, you want to give you sort of a little plug, mate? Uh, yeah, my name's um, Irish Tommy. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I will follow all West Ham fans back. It's at Tomster36. Uh, and I have my own show on the West Ham Network on Friday nights at 10 o'clock. Uh, Gonzo has kindly joined me on one of those. Um, so, yeah, maybe tune in for that on Friday nights at 10 o'clock on West Ham Network for the Late Late Show with Irish Tommy. There you go. The very late, late. It is late. It's always late. That's why I couldn't make the first couple. Um, Tommy, really appreciate it, buddy. Thanks very much. Uh, as I say, uh, we'll catch up with you very, very soon. Very much appreciated for all your support. Please like, subscribe, share the video. I guess at least we all get to enjoy the rest of our weekend. <laughs>